message today is for somebody. But let me say this. It's not your job to make a man appreciate your presence. And I know that sounds counterintuitive to a lot of what I've said before, but it's not. You can't make a man really do anything, but you definitely can't make a man appreciate you and your presence and the fact that you show up for him and, and that you're being in his life. But what you should always do is make sure that a man respects your absence. As a woman, you must always make sure a man respects your absence. That means he must always have to acknowledge the possibility that he could lose you. And I know that sounds messed up, but I'm not telling you to play around with a man, to toy with him, um, to take for granted that men need to feel safe and secure in their relationship too, or anything like that. What I'm saying is speak the language of men. If you're gonna connect with a man and get the best out of a man, you have to speak the language of men. And men, we communicate with loss. We understand loss. We understand that if we don't take care of something and we could lose it, we better bring our best. We better put our best foot forward. There's nothing in the world that a man is not in fear of losing or, or doesn't even respect that he could possibly lose that he's going to do his best to keep. Nothing, including a woman. Everything that a man knows could be here today and gone tomorrow. He will fight to the death to protect. If he loves his children, his children, his money, his respect, his reputation. You see men go to the end of the earth for something that they know they could possibly lose at any moment. But have you ever seen a woman that's considered to be the woman that ain't going nowhere? Ah, oh, she ain't going nowhere. Have you ever seen that woman get the best out of a man? Somebody tell me. I have it. She ain't going nowhere. Yeah, she ain't gonna never leave me. You've never heard that said about a woman who's getting the absolute best out of a man. But what about the woman that's like, man, she too important to lose. But I, I can't fumble this one. What do you know about when a man is saying something like that? He's likely trying to tap into his absolute best. So for you to even have a chance to get the best out of a man, he must respect your absence. He must be aware that he could possibly lose you like so he cannot play with you. And I was just stressing this to a young lady. She's in my self crown VIP. For those who don't know, that's my app where I go live every week. I answer questions, all that good stuff. Anyway, she was sitting there like, hey, I don't know why he treats me like this. I, I, I do this for him. I do that for him. I go to the ends of the earth for him. I've been over backwards for him. I'll, I'll basically, I'll cross the ocean for him. I'm like, but he won't even jump over a puddle for you. Why are you doing all of this? And when she thought like a lot of people, whenever a man took her for granted, she could kind of inspire him to appreciate her by giving him more of what he was already wasting in her love, her time, her energy. And I said, look, you're working backwards. Maybe as a woman, that's how y'all work. But as a man, if you're going to get the best out of us, we must have in our mind that, oh, wait, I could lose her at any moment. Not for any little thing. Let me explain. First off, the first way that you make sure that a man respects your absence, and some of y'all, it may be too late, some of y'all, it's not. But if you're single, it definitely listen to this part. But you must establish a certain level of fulfillment and happiness when you're single. Those of y'all who are coming in and you're blurring the line between you being intentional for a real relationship and all of that, you're blurring that line and the line where you need a man to save you from your singleness. This is why I caution you against that. You can be single in your, you can be happy in your singleness while still desiring a relationship. You can live a life that's fulfilling, that you, when you do things, you know, this is what brings you happiness, like you're good while still wanting and making room for a man in your life that you can value and, you know, having a relationship and you can take care of his needs, meet his needs, reciprocate his energy, all of that stuff. Don't think that the only way that you could be out here really open to a, a, a loving relationship is to be desperate for one until you get one. In fact, that's the absolute worst position. Being happy in your singleness gives you the most leverage to get what you deserve, not to just take what you can get. Because when you're happy in your singleness, that man has in his mind, she was good before I met her. In a relationship, she was good before I met her. So that's what I'm competing with. I'm competing with her being good before I met her. I don't get to, to meet this bar that's in hell because before me, she was so depressed and anxious and waiting for a man and just couldn't do nothing until she got into a relationship. Her whole life was just waiting for a relationship. So at all points in the relationship, if you were happy before you met that man, in fact, that actually makes you more attractive because you're coming with overflow instead of a void for somebody to fix. But if you were happy before you met that man, that's what he knows he has to has to compete with. 
And men don't mind competition. I'm going to tell you why in just a moment. But that's the first way to make sure that a man respects your absence. That he always has to acknowledge he could lose you at any moment, which is a good thing for men. The second way, and it's kind of close, but you must maintain a level of interdependence during a relationship. And I understand, especially in marriage, you know, there may be times where you are dependent on that man. If you just had his baby, you may be dependent on him. If you sacrifice your dreams in order to take care of the house while he's out going to go to work, yeah, you may be financially dependent on him for a while or something like that. But to the best of your ability, you need to make sure that you maintain some level of interdependence, meaning you're good without him, but you value him while he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, while he's being a valuable contributor. Because again, you don't want a dependentship. You want a relationship. You want something where y'all are together because y'all relate well, because he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Not because you can't survive without him. Because here's the thing, whenever you guys meet conflict in a relationship and you're forcing that man to, to address ugly parts of himself that nobody really wants to address in order to grow and to evolve and to properly take care of you, he's going to consider the alternative. Because it's, it's hurtful, it's tough, it's, 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 it's really difficult to really face those ugly parts of yourself, to discipline yourself, to check your ego, to be humble, to be considerate, whereas he may not have had that coming into the relationship. So when he considers that alternative, he needs to know that it's really real, that you'll go out there and you'll either be good without him, because financially you don't depend on him, emotionally, mentally you don't depend on him, as opposed to thinking, well, you know, I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta do the hard work. She ain't good without me anyway. No. If you ever get to that point, I promise you, you're going to get complacency at best from a man. The third way you make sure that a man respects your absence is to have a life outside of him. This kind of goes into being single and being happy as well. But have a life outside of him. Never get to a point where you have no friends, no family, no activities outside of that man. And the best way to do this is, again, not thinking of a relationship as something that's got to save you. Not being in a space while you're even open to a relationship where you need to be saved at all. But you need to maintain a life outside of that man. And lastly, you must constantly affirm your boundaries with conditional love. Now, this is the part I really want to stress to y'all. Because this is the part where I think a lot of y'all go wrong. As women, you're thinking, most times anyway, if I love him hard as hard as i possibly can he's not going to want to fumble me no that's how you think that's how you think as a woman but think about just the, the fact that okay from neanderthal times men go out and we hunt and everything like that what motivates us to go out there and hunt what would motivate us just think hypothetically speaking if we don't we're going to suffer we're going to starve our family's going to starve what motivates us to go out to war we just like the potential of dying? No, because we don't want our children to die, our, our family to die, our communities to burn down. Like we, we don't want something to go, right? There's a condition. If, if something is not protected, we're going to lose it. If we don't fight, we're going to lose it. If we don't go to achieve or go to gather, we're going to lose it. There's conditions to everything. So don't think that you're, you're like, you don't ever want to get to a point where your conditions are fickle or their surface level, you know, oh, if he ain't got enough money today, you're not going to love him. Nah, 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 nah. But the condition should be whatever it is that he came in propositioning you on in the relationship, he has to maintain that throughout the relationship. So conditional love in the relationship is if a time goes by where he's consistently not meeting the standard that he set coming in, that you pull back. Conditional love says, the relationship title alone ain't enough to maintain access to me. You don't get me once and then the job is done. I'm a matter of daily deposits. You have to earn me on a daily basis to continue getting access to me. Again, not manipulative love where every time he does do something you don't like, you just automatically pull back. But if it's been clearly established what's expected of him and he agreed to that, you ain't put no gun to his hand. And then a season of the relationship goes by where he's not doing that. There's no way you should maintain the exact same type of access to that man. If nothing else, it should be a matter of prioritizing how to get that back right. Because if you don't get that back right, you're going to start rewarding and enabling destructive behavior. And as you do that, what you're teaching that man is it's okay to take you for granted.
And in order to keep yourself from being taken for granted, you have to make sure a man respects your absence. Again, that comes with your firm boundaries. When you say something, you mean it. Ain't no exceptions. You can have some grace and some patience. That's just in any relationship with a human being because you need the same thing. But it's never going to become the new normal that you don't get your needs met or that what you asked him or what you told him is not respected or that whenever you talk, it's OK for it to go in one ear and out the other. No, that love that you giving that man should come with conditions. And the only man that's going to have a problem with that is the man that wants to hurt you. The man that doesn't want to have to do what he's supposed to do to keep you in every other area of our life. We got conditions. We got conditions to keep our car. If we don't meet the conditions of paying that bill or, or that car note, we're going to lose it. If we don't drive the speed limit or whatever, you know, we're going to lose our license. <laughs> if we don't do what we're supposed to do to take care of our body, we're going to lose our, our body, our, our muscles and abs and stuff. We got conditions every, everywhere else. So in a relationship, why is it that you should ever give something without conditions? That's crazy. Now, can you make that man respect your absence? Not necessarily. But you want to make sure you're doing your part. Now, why can't you make him respect your absence? Because you have to be dealing with a man who has the capacity to understand what he has to lose. Like you got people who lose winning lottery tickets all the time. So you don't want to make that your responsibility that you make him see you're a winning lotto ticket. When somebody loses that winning lotto ticket, what happens? Most times they didn't know it was going to be a winning lotto ticket or they were just so irresponsible. It didn't matter how valuable it was, what they had in their possession. They were going to lose it at some point. That's that's on them. Cool. Let that be on them, but never let somebody's irresponsibility be the reason why your heart breaks because you thinking, oh, I just need to continue giving them something super valuable to lose when they're showing me they can't take care of what I'm already giving them. And the only man that has the capacity to understand that if he doesn't take care of something, he's going to lose it is an evolved man. There is no evolving that man for him when he wasn't already coming into the relationship with that type of mindset. Now, if you feel like you're already doing your part, you've done the work on yourself, but you're not getting the best out of a man, you're not attracting evolved men, then you need to use the strategies to attract evolved men. Something I went in depth with in my master class, Secrets to Make an Evolved Man Crave You. If you haven't yet, get access to that master class at the link that you see pinned right there. Secrets to Make an Evolved Man Crave You. If you feel like you're underwhelmed and you know, you're disappointed by the men that you're attracting, you're just not using the right strategies in order to attract an evolved man. And that's if you've done the work on yourself. And if you still have work to do on yourself, I talked about that as well. Over an hour, I went in on how to attract evolved men from the inside out, from your authentic self. But moral of the story is this. Never give a man an impression that you won't walk away if he doesn't take proper care of you. Ever. Those are just my thoughts. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Share this if you got anything from it. And again, get access to the free masterclass right here. Secrets to making evolved men crave you. If you're in the market for an evolved man that you don't have to teach these things, he's already holding himself accountable to that and he's ready to love you properly. The link is right here pinned in the comments. Also in the caption whenever you back out. I'll let y'all let